but evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, the Mutual Network brings you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Since Pearl Harbor, over 500,000 victims of 869 domestic disasters have been given food, clothing, shelter, and medical care by your Red Cross. Yes, even in spite of war, Red Cross carried on on the home front. For disaster is no respecter of war. When tragedies occur, Red Cross disaster workers are on the scene immediately. But your Red Cross is present not only in time of disaster. It is also with our men still overseas, our wounded in the hospitals, and our veterans who are struggling to try and readjust themselves to the problems of civilian life. So give generously to your American Red Cross for its wide and diversified program of service to humanity. Now the shadow. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Walking Corpse. <laughs> You are finally awake. What? What's happened? You have been asleep. In a very deep sleep for quite some time. Where am I? I, I don't remember this place. That is quite natural. You have been through a very strange experience. Yes. Very strange. I don't understand. I, I don't even know who I am. You don't? And you don't remember what you have done? I can't remember anything. Then look in that long mirror over there. Look at your shaved head. The burns on your wrists and ankles. Your slit trouser leg. Now do you know who you are? No. No, it can't be. I couldn't have come back. Do you doubt your own eyes? Do you? No. No, I guess not. Very well, then. Now, hold out your hand. Good. See the strong hand. Very strong hand. Strong hand. Hands. Strong hands. Strong oh, no, hands. Oh, you fool. Put your hands down. You almost choked me. I couldn't help it. Suddenly I wanted of to... Of course. Perfectly natural. You felt the urge to strangle someone. Perfectly natural. Considering who you are and what you have done... Lamont, this is Helen Borelli. She's one of the girls I advised down at the settlement house, and I told her you might be able to help her. Well, I'll be glad to do whatever I can, Margot. Well, tell me, Miss Borelli, how long has your brother been missing? He hasn't been home for a couple of weeks or more. I'm awfully worried, Mr. Cranston. Have you reported your brother's disappearance to the police, Miss Borelli? No. Joe's always been kind of afraid of the police. Do you have any idea why, Helen? No, unless it had something to do with the cult. Your brother was a member of a cult? Yes, but I never found out exactly what it was. I see. Perhaps there's some friend of your brother's who might have an idea where he is. The only friend of his uh, that I know of is a man named Lopez. He runs a curio shop down on Center Street. I've been to see him a half a dozen times, but every time he just gets sore and tells me to mind my own business. Were your brother and this Lopez on good terms? All I know is they spent a lot of time together. I think they were in a business of some kind. If anybody knows where Joe is, it would be Lopez. I see. 
I think it would be best if you reported your brother's disappearance to the police, Miss Borelli. In the meantime, Miss Lane and I'll go down to Lopez's shop and see what we can find out about your brother. Let's see how the little music box works, Toby. Yeah. And this ought to play perfectly now. Ah, Lopez will get a fine price for this one, eh, Toby? <laughs> Perhaps people will wonder how a poor little shopkeeper like Lopez could get such a precious little curio. But what they don't know won't hurt them, eh, Toby? Customer. What is the matter, Toby? It is only a customer in the front of the shop. Toby, why do you arch your back, sir? Quiet, quiet, Toby. He's coming back. Ah, oh, I am sorry, sir. I was coming right out. Who are you? What are you? Don't come any closer, don't. I called for help, but... Ah! Hmm. Oh, Lamont, look at those old statuettes he has in the window. That's queer looking, aren't they? Yes, but... Come on, let's go in. All right. Well, nobody seems to be around. Well, maybe he's in the back. Mr. Lopez certainly has an unusual assortment of gadgets. Oh, look at these strange little figures on that shelf. Yeah, they look like native charms. You mean the kind that ward off evil spells? Probably. Well, I wonder what this Lopez is. Looks like a back room behind those curtains there. I'll see if he's back there. Hmm. Lopez! Lopez! Miss... Lamont, you should see this little clock here. It's the most exquisite... Wait, stop! What is it? Don't come back here, darling. Well, what's happened? What... Lamont, what is it? There's a man back there, Margot. He's been strangled to death. Oh. Do you think it's Helen's brother? No, Margot. Not from the description she gave of him. Lopez? I'm afraid so. What's that you're holding? Something I saw lying near the body. Looks like a small glove. A little piece of black cloth cut out in the shape of a hand. Something sewed up inside it. I wonder if... I'll slit it open with my penknife. There. Yeah, empty it on this counter. Why, it's a tiny piece of bone. And some dust. Now, this is getting very interesting, Margot. What does it mean, Lamont? Unless I'm very much mistaken, this little symbol is Voodoo. Voodoo? Yes. The little black hand is a voodoo calling card of death in the black magic cult of Haiti. And Helen Borelli said her brother belonged to a cult? Yes. And if the cult Borelli belonged to was voodoo, I think someone... I think I know someone who can give us information about him. Who? Mama Segreto. Who's she? An old native woman from the West Indies. Oh, darling, you know the strangest people. She's helped me out before, put me on the track of several underworld characters. We're going to phone the police, Margot, and report Lopez's murder... Then I think we'd better drop in on Mama Segreto. Be still, feathered one. Be still. You must forgive my pet bird, Mr. Cranston. He still thinks he is on the island. Mama Segreto, we've come for some information. Well, what do you wish to know? We're looking for a man named Borelli. Borelli is no longer one of us. Do not seek him here. Then he was a member of the voodoo cult. Yes. 
Yes, he was, but he is no longer one of us. Do you know where Borelli is now, Mama Segreto? No. The man Borelli is evil. We do not allow criminals among our people. How do you know he's a criminal, Mama Segreto? Uh, it has come to my knowledge. A man by the name of Lopez was strangled this morning. Lopez? Yes. Do you know him? No. No, I do not know him. This little black hand was found near his body. You recognize it? It is voodoo. Lopez had many native curios in his shop. Perhaps Lopez stole them from a native burial ground. Perhaps the cult appointed Joe Borelli to avenge the wrong, and perhaps you're hiding Joe Borelli in this house right now, Mama Segreto. No, the man Borelli is a lawbreaker, a criminal. I know nothing about Borelli. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Don't you think you were a little rough on Mama Segreto? Well, we did find out that Borelli was a member of her voodoo cult. Yes, and if we're to believe her, Borelli was not only out of favor with the cult, but had crossed the law some way. Exactly. Maybe that the cult business was just a dodge to hide the real killer. How do you mean? Well, Mama Segreto was obviously afraid of Borelli, not for what he'd done in the cult, but because he's a criminal. Perhaps a murderer. Before we do anything else, Margot, I think we'd better get down to headquarters and check on his police record. <laughs> Margo. Oh, Hello, Mr. Commissioner. Weston. Well, I suppose you two want to get the latest dope on that Lopez murder you reported. Yes, Commissioner. Anything you turn up? Oh, well, I've got a dragnet out for Borelli, but we're not going to have to wait for the boys to bring him in to find out who the killer is. You know who the killer is now, Commissioner? We will in a few minutes. We found the killer's fingerprints all over Lopez's collar. As soon as we confirm the analysis of the prints, we'll have our man. You think they're Borelli's fingerprints? Well, maybe. Lopez and Borelli were mixed up in some hot goods racket together. They've both got records. So Borelli does have a police record. Yeah, sure. But this Lopez probably had plenty of other enemies, Margo. Yes, he might have had a lot of enemies. Commissioner, did you know that there was a West Indian voodoo cult in this city? Voodoo cult? That Lopez was mixed up in it in some way? Now, wait a second, Cranston. You're not going to sit there and tell me that this murder had something to do with a voodoo cult. Commissioner, uh, about those prints in the Lopez case. Oh, what about them? I've checked and rechecked them, and they don't make sense. What are you talking about? Those fingerprints we found of Lopez belong to Peter Dorn. Peter Dorn? Not the same yes, one. Yes, Commissioner, the same one. There, the prince of Peter Dorn, the killer who was electrocuted, the penitentiary last month. The shadow returns in just a moment. Friends, the shooting war is over, but your Red Cross is still in there fighting, planning new invasions, invasions against suffering, hunger, and loneliness. And speaking of loneliness... Let's not forget the Low Point boys still overseas. There are more than 1,500,000 of them spread out all over the world, including godforsaken islands in the Pacific. Many of us already have forgotten, but your Red Cross never forgets. It's still there with our rear guard, helping to make life a little brighter, helping to ease the burden. Yes, the job of the Army of Occupation, according to both Generals Eisenhower and MacArthur, would be ten times tougher if it were not for Red Cross activities overseas. The Red Cross Club is G.I. Joe's home away from home. And wherever he sees the sign of the Red Cross, he knows that America isn't really thousands of miles away. So, give as generously as you can to help your Red Cross fight this battle against loneliness, as well as all its other conflicts with disaster and suffering. Give generously to the Red Cross for its wide and diversified program of service to humanity. Now... Back to the shadow. On the trail of the weird voodoo murder, Margot and Lamont are abruptly halted in their chase when they discover that the fingerprints of the killer are those of Peter Dorn, a convicted murderer who was electrocuted in the penitentiary over a month ago. And you say Commissioner Weston checked on Dorn's body before you left headquarters, Lamont? Yes. He found that after Dorn's electrocution, his body had been claimed by his next of kin, his older brother. And now they can't find any trace of Dorn's brother? It's apparently disappeared off the face of the earth. Oh, it's preposterous, darling. A man strangles death by an electrocuted convict. It's a fantastic part of it, Margot. Strangulation was Peter Dorn's specialty. He had a strange mania of whistling a little tune before he choked his victims to death. 
I remember his pictures in the papers. He was horrible. Those eyes and that thin white face. And one of the strongest of the voodoo's beliefs is in the zombie. The walking dead. Oh, darling, there must be some rational explanation for this thing. Well, there's got to be. I wonder. Margot, I think it's time the shadow took a hand in this voodoo mystery. The trail seems to lead right back to Mama Segreto. She didn't tell us much the first time. But now the shadow is going to get the real story. <laughs> you are hungry, my feathered one. Here, sit on your little perch and let me give you your dinner. Ah, there now. Is that better, my pretty one? Ah, Mama Segreto has a visitor. Something still, my feathered one. It is just a caller. Who is it? Why do you not answer? I'll see who walks into my house. No. No. It is not real. You... No. No, put your hands down. Do not touch me. Help! Zombie! Zombie again. Come back to finish your job of murder. This is the shadow, Mama Segreto. I'm here to help you. What has happened? I cannot see you. But you cannot help me. I am already dying. Marks on the throat like those on Lopez. The shadow cannot save your life now, Mama Segreto. But he can avenge this wicked deed. Who attacked you, Mama Segreto? Zombie. The walking dead. The walking dead? You are the garb for the condemned. Wrists burned. Trouser like slit. Head shaved. Had you ever seen this man before? Yes. In life, he was one called Peter Dorn. Peter Dorn? Listen to me closely, Mama Segreto. <laughs> what connection is there between Dorn and Joe Borelli, the member of your cult who disappeared? Uh, none. There is no connection. But you do know something of Borelli's disappearance, don't you? Yes, I I have lied to others, but I will tell you the truth. Borelli was here some time ago with one called Lopez. They had done evil, and the police, they shot Borelli. He was badly hurt. Did he die here in your house? No. A man who called himself a doctor came and took him away. Where can the shadow find this doctor, Mama Segreto? I have his name. All information hidden in the little face. Right there. Rest in peace, Mama Segreto. The shadow will avenge your death. Those port steps, darling, they're pretty rickety. Mm. The whole place looks as if it were about to fall apart. This is the doctor's place, all right, according to Mama Segreta's note. Looks like something out of Poe. Mm. Shutters half off their hinges. Overgrown bushes in the yard. So it does look deserted. No lights in any of the front rooms. No. Marco, listen. Somebody's walking around in there. Sounds as if it's coming from the side of the house. This porch goes around. Come on, Marco. Oh, here we are. There's a light on in that room. Be careful, Lamont. Oh, we can see.
see inside. Through this window. That man standing under the light. It's the man Mama Segreta described. He's turning around now. It's Dorn, Lamont. It's Dorn. I recognize him from the newspaper pictures. He's alive. He's turned out the light. Margot, we've got to get into that house, and we've got to get in right now. But we've been all over the upper part of the house, Lamont. There wasn't a sign of anyone. I don't know how he could have gotten away. Maybe hiding in one of these rooms down here in the basement. Oh, my Careful. I, I, I bumped into something. Wait a minute, I'll strike a match. A low wooden butt. The mind is a coffin. Yes. I'll raise the lid. <gasps> it's a body. Yes. The man we saw through the window. It's dawn. Please, please, come on. Let's get out of this now place. Steady, please, darling. Please. This. Those steps again. They're coming from the other end of the basement down there. Come on. Oh, quietly. Here, yeah, listen. They're coming from behind this door. They sound just like the ones we heard upstairs. Yes. This door's made of steel. There's no chance of breaking in. But what does it all mean, Lamont? If that was Dorn's body in that box back there, how can these... I'm going what... back and have another look at that body. If what I suspect is true... What? There's some time to explain now. Come on. box was somewhere near here. Here, darling, light another match. Lamont, you left the lid open, didn't you? Yes. Someone's closed it. It's gone. The body's gone. Put out that match. Somebody's opened that steel door down the other end. Lamont, I can't stand another minute of this. I, I... I won't have to, darling. We'll duck upstairs and get you safely out. And I want you to phone the police. Tell Weston to get here as fast as he can. Well, what are you going to do? The Shadow's going to have a talk with that zombie. Who is it? Who came in? <laughs> it's the shadow, Joe Borelli. I can't see you. I'm right here with you in this laboratory, Borelli. My name is not Borelli. I'm Dawn. Peter Dawn. I think the doctor made you believe that. But your name is Joe Borelli. And your partner's name is Lopez. Lopez, whom the doctor made you kill before you strangled Mama Segreto. I killed Lopez and Mama Segreto? Yes, Morelli. Your friend, the doctor, made you continue the crimes of Peter Dawn. But he told me I was Dawn. I, I didn't remember being anyone else. You were badly hurt when you were brought here. The doctor did a great deal to you before you recovered consciousness. But the marks of the execution, my shaved head, my face in the mirror was Dawn. Dawn is dead, Morelli. The shadow has seen his body. Someone's coming. If it's the doctor, act as if you're still under his influence. All right, Shadow. So, here you are, Dorn. How many times have I told you to stay out of my laboratory? I'm sorry, Dr. Richards. It is time now to go out for another walk, Dorn. There is another cult member on my list we should pay a little visit to. No. No more. No more. Dorn. I'm not Dorn. I'm wise to your plan now. Trying to convince me that I was Dorn, making me strangle Lopez and that old woman. So, your memory has come back. Only now it is too late. You are a strangler now, Borelli. You have outdone Dorn at his own game and with Dorn's own hand. All right, then. I'll put those hands where they belong, around your neck. No. Let him go, Borelli. Who spoke? Someone you'll have to answer to for your crimes, Richards. The shadow has caught up with you. <laughs> Who is speaking? I can see no one. No one can see the shadow. Dr. Richards, you're responsible for the murders of Lopez and Mama Segreto. Borelli committed the crimes. You haven't any proof against me. The proof is there. Borelli's fingers on which you grafted the skin you took from Peter Dawn's fingertips. No one will ever believe you, Shadow. Borelli's fingers will be evidence enough to send you to the chair. All right, then. I'll destroy the evidence. Why, you... Borelli! Don't try to interfere, Shadow. I've got a gun in Borelli's back. I'll kill him if you touch me. Start walking, Borelli. Oh, no. See this sunken tank in the middle of the roof floor? No, not that. The electric current in that tank will boil the skin right off your body, Borelli. 
I'm going to push you into it right now. And then there'll be no evidence. Look out, Morelli! Ah! Lamont, what happened down there in the laboratory after you sent me for the police? When the doctor discovered that the shadow had found him out, he tried to push Joe Borelli into a sunken tank that was wired with high-voltage electric current. And then the doctor fell in himself? Yes. The shadow pushed Borelli out of the way. Dr. Richard's own forward motion caused him to lose his balance. What a horrible death. Who was this Dr. Richards, anyway? The so-called Dr. Richards, Margaret, was actually Peter Dorn's older brother, the man who claimed Dorn's body immediately after the electrocution. He was a brilliant but apparently demented surgeon who had his license revoked by the medical profession. But I, I don't understand why Richards would want Lopez and Mama Segreto out of the way. Revenge, Margot. Dawn was once a member of the voodoo cult. But when uh, Mama Segreto and the other members discovered he was a killer, they tipped off the police and ultimately sent Dawn to the electric chair. And then Richards found out that the cult had double-crossed his brother and decided to get revenge. Exactly. The ironical part about it is the doctor used Borelli, a member of the cult, to do the killings for him. Oh, awful. What's going to happen to Borelli, Lamont? I'm afraid he'll have to stand trial, Margot, but I think the jury will take into consideration that under the insidious influence of Dr. Richards, he wasn't entirely responsible for his own acts. A long time ago, a profound philosopher said... The habit of saving is itself an education. It fosters every virtue, teaches self-denial, trains to forethought, and so broadens the mind. These words are particularly significant today because for the past four years, the American people have saved $45 billion in war savings bonds alone. All of you invested your dollars in bonds because you knew that it was one of the best ways you could contribute to the winning of the war. However, saving became a habit. And most of you learn to like it because you, like the philosopher, realize that saving is an education in itself. Now you have the opportunity to continue this habit by keeping up your regular purchases of United States savings bonds. They're the same bonds you bought during the war, and you can still purchase them through payroll savings. Next week, same time, same station, the Cary Salt Company brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Don't miss it. Meanwhile, farmers and ranchers, be sure to get your new Cary Farm record book, free at your dealers, or send 10 cents to Cary Salt in care of this station. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.